Welcome to this special 28storms.com update on this late Monday evening, August 1st. We just had confirmation that Tropical Storm Emily has formed, so this is a special video update. Just a few hours ago, we noted that the low-level circulation was more than likely developing directly over the Lesser Antilles, but at the time, the reconnaissance plane was not confirming any westerly winds, which would have been a good indicator that this had a closed surface circulation. But sure enough, just within the last few hours, there has been enough evidence to upgrade this to Tropical Storm Emily. The latest particulars show that Emily has maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. It's currently moving off toward the west at 17 miles per hour, but most of the model guidance shows a more of a bend toward the west-northwest within the next 24 to 48 hours. The center of circulation is already just to the west of the Lesser Antilles, but some of those easternmost bands can still produce tropical storm force winds, and that's why much of the Leeward Islands, or at least the lower half, are now under tropical storm warnings. Also, this storm is expected to move directly across the Dominican Republic along with Haiti. Now, this is going to be problematic, not only because this could highly disrupt the intensity, which would also act to disrupt the track forecast from the models in all likelihood here in the medium range over the western Atlantic, but this also has the, the possibility to produce life threatening flooding over much of Hispaniola. Hispaniola suffers from catastrophic flooding even without major tropical systems passing through. So that is a bit of a concern, especially over here in Haiti, where we still have over one million people still living in tents following the earthquake disaster. Also, the track is just to the south and west of Puerto Rico, but you are under a tropical storm warning, as even if the storm passes just toward your south, you could still face some tropical storm force conditions. Not to mention there is still the outside chance that this turns a bit more toward the right, as we've been talking about for the last 48 hours, the models have been very fickle and they are shifting quite a lot from run to run, so we cannot rule out a Puerto Rico landfall just yet. And furthermore, all interests in the Bahamas and southern Florida need to be keeping a close eye on this storm. Due to the unusual degree of model uncertainty and forecast uncertainty as a whole, we cannot fully determine exactly which particular side of the Florida Peninsula that this storm will end up on. There is an outside chance that this could even get into the southeast Gulf of Mexico, although I am leaning toward a track that takes this more so into the Bahamas near Miami, and that's generally in agreement with what the Hurricane Center is showing. And as I've been talking about, especially in the video posted several hours ago, there is just so much uncertainty right now, and that's greatly dependent on the final intensity once this makes it through the greater Antilles. And I'm mainly talking about Hispaniola and even eastern Cuba to a lesser degree because it has just as much mountainous terrain. This is just a quick look at the latest spaghetti model plot just to show you that we have many model members that take this directly over Hispaniola, but we also have... Half of the models taking this off into the southeast gulf, while the other half take this more up the eastern side of Florida. Now, since the last video, we do have a couple model updates to go over. This is the latest 18Z GFS. As we see, the model is taking this a bit more toward the north in the short term compared to just a few hours ago. Now, we're looking at late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This is the closest approach to the southwest half of Puerto Rico. You're still getting some outer bands and possibly tropical storm force conditions. And then by early Thursday morning, it's passing over the Dominican Republic. By f late Thursday night into Friday morning, it's definitely well into the western Atlantic by Thursday night and Friday morning once again this is beginning to enter the extreme southeast Bahamas and this is a much more easterly track than even just the 12 Z run so this is a bit of a shift back toward the east and the models or at least the GFS in particular is beginning to show a little bit more troughing again and then toward the end of the period it does get fairly close to the United States east coast but the last saving grace is a short wave trough that quickly turns this out to sea and in fact more toward Bermuda now we're going to look at the latest mid-level steering forecast from the GFS and we're primarily looking at the North American region. The tropical storm at this time of course is still well to the southeast over the Caribbean Sea but as of the current hour notice that much of the south central United States is being dominated by a very strong area of mid to upper level ridging whereas we still have a lot of troughing here over much of the eastern seaboard. But notice what happens ever so slowly over time we begin to see that the trough is still strong enough here over the western Atlantic to begin to lure our tropical storm Emily now just to the north of Hispaniola. Again, this is by early Thursday morning beginning to approach the extreme southeast Bahamas. But that trough does steadily begin to lift out here. And then the ridge that was over much of the south central United States begins to connect more so with the deep subtropical Atlantic ridge here over the central Atlantic. 
And so that's going to help guide this a little bit more toward the west instead of going straight out to sea. But notice that in between, we still have some very weak troughiness here over the Tennessee and Ohio valleys. And between day five and day six, we begin to see that it weakens the western half of this ridge a little bit once again. And notice the direction of our wind vectors here. They're, main, they're, they're mainly out of the south. And that's going to ensure that this turns away from the U.S. East Coast now, is this forecast model solution accurate? Well, that's the million dollar question right now. That troughing that comes in between day five and day six over the Tennessee Valley could easily be not as strong as the model is entertaining, and then that could induce more of a westerly track more into the southeast United States. Now, one thing that does add to the confidence behind that trough at least a little bit more is that the 18Z GFS ensembles also show the same troughy-like pattern between day 6 and day 7. Here is that trough over the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. This is day 6, and that might be just enough to weaken that western periphery of the Atlantic subtropical ridge. And then by day 7, we have a full trough here over much of the mid-Atlantic and New England states. A couple other noteworthy model updates from the 18Z package is that the GFDL does show rapid weakening over Hispaniola to the point to where the storm does not recover over the Bahamas. This is a scenario that we will have to closely watch for, although the GFDL has not been a very good model this hurricane season. And the most recent HWARF run is a little bit faster, and it also takes it a little bit closer to Puerto Rico compared to earlier. So we still cannot rule out that Puerto Rico hit, as I told you before, and it takes it more so over the eastern Bahamas and a bit more to the east of Florida than the official forecast is indicating, and it takes it fairly close to the Carolinas before beginning to recurve out to sea. And this is simply the water vapor presentation of what's occurring along the eastern half of North America. There's our dominant ridge that has been very persistent, and it really hasn't wanted to move much at all during this entire summer. The trough is well in place right now over the southeast. If this were to persist, this would quickly recurve with no questions asked. But again, those models are showing the ridge building at least initially over the first three to four days. And we'll just have to wait and see if this trough is reinforced once again by those shortwave troughs that we saw coming across the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. But of course, the main emphasis, especially over the next 72 hours, will be the threat that Tropical Storm Emily poses to much of the eastern and northern Caribbean. This is the latest radar animation from the Lesser Antilles, and it's not the best of radar animations, but you can still clearly make out a bit of a low-level circulation here, especially in and around the island of Dominica. And on this visible animation right before sunset, as noted before, it looked like we were beginning to have a low-level circulation developed directly over the Lesser Antilles. And sure enough, as we see it begin to tra transition to an infrared as we approach the evening hours, we see that convection has developed directly over that low-level circulation. And that has caused enough organization and strengthening for the Hurricane Center to upgrade this to Tropical Storm Emily. And there's that convection building directly over the center, as noted. So that is your evening update on Tropical Storm Emily here at 28storms.com. Please stay with us as we will try to provide as many videos as possible as long as Emily poses a threat to the Caribbean and the Southeast United States. As of right now, it is too early to say with confidence whether or not Emily will make a direct landfall along the Southeast United States, especially Florida. And once again, a lot of that is determined by what the strength will be once this exits the Greater Antilles in a few days. And until then, we'll just have to see how the pattern begins to evolve. So that's all for now. Have a good evening and be safe out there in the Eastern Caribbean.